Look up for the bobo tomorrow. You want to water with the big one? That's right, yeah. Oh, okay. Then we will show up on as you look out over the landscapes of an area such as Venetia, you see the most incredible trees. The ones that stick out the most, of course, are the baobabs. It's fairly difficult to identify them in their juvenile state. Baobabs also grow over a tremendously long time. The straw-colored fruit bat is one of the main pollinators of this tree, and the fruit itself is eaten by baboon and the bark by elephant. The trunk is huge, often with hollows deep enough for a human to hide in. And we can see this as we peer into one of the holes in this large great baobab. Hmm. There's a very cool inside here. Eh? Nobody lives in here. The trees, with a circumference of around about 30 meters or more, are estimated to be at least 4,000 years old. So these trees would have seen the land of Mapungupwe and various other aspects that happened in this area. The trunk decreases in girth during dry season and swells again up after the rain as it holds more water. The spongy wood contains a high proportion of water. Humans as well as animals have chewed on this wood over centuries to relieve thirst. Fiber to weave baskets and hats from the bark. Flour is prepared from the roots. Fresh leaves are used as spinach and of course the fruit is edible. The creamy flesh been sucked from the pips. The pulp is rich in vitamin C and once this is what we knew as cream of tartar in our homes. From the fruit pulp the old folk make a drink that is prepared and used to treat fevers and diarrhea. The leaves themselves are also used to treat fevers and reduce perspiration and act as an astringent. Powdered seeds are given to children as a hiccup remedy. They also are roasted and made into coffee. The bark and leaves are a traditional method of treating malaria, dysentery, bladder disorders and mild diarrhea. What is also beautiful about these trees is when you look at them, they look like large candles that have allowed their wax to fall over the sides and we see all sorts of shapes and faces within the tree. Many people have also thought this deciduous tree to be the upside down tree as they look at it across the landscape. As we discover more about the tree and we talk to Richard, we'll also find out a little bit about this tree being used as a compass. So if we get lost in the bush, then we don't have a compass, then we look for the bobo trees. If we see the red-billed buffalo weaver nests on the trees, we know that they are nesting more to the western direction. Then we know that west is that way, then east is that way. So those nests help a lot for us if maybe we are walking in the bush. Does the uh, baobab tree have any form of medicinal value or in fact um, traditional beliefs, myths and legends that are shared by the old folk? At the home, the old people, if maybe a woman raised a thin baby, that baby is not strong enough. If you look at the baobab tree, it's fat and big and strong. So it is believed that if a woman raised a thin baby, and then the old woman, they will cut the bark of that tree and boil it and leave it to cool down. And then they will add cold water. What they will do, they will put the little baby into the washing basin. Then they will wash the baby from the neck down the body. It is believed that if maybe you wash the baby the whole body, she will become shapeless. She will appear like a bobo tree. So what they will do, they will wash the baby from the neck down the body so that you can grow fat and strong like the bobo tree trunk. 